and now let's go to this layout one tab here so by default these two tabs will always be present but if you want to add more tabs you can simply click on this plus icon and that will add the new tab with the default name of layout 3 layout 4 and so on but you can change these names selectively for example in this case we have this layout one let's say that we want to change it and i'll change it to floor plan so i'll just double click on this and now enter the text and here we have it the floor plan now click outside and the layout tab has been renamed alternatively you can also right click on them and simply select rename option if you want now when you go to any of these layout tabs for example i'll select this floor plan and here we have some of these settings which are specifically related to the layout tabs the first thing which you will notice is this gray background so that's the inactive page area and this white active area is the paper or the final page on which you will plot your drawing so layout is simply like a preview of your final print so here we have the page and on this page on this white paper we will arrange all the components of the drawing before getting our final output now here we have this dotted line also so this is the plotter margin and anything which is beyond this plotter margin will not be plotted this plotter margin is dependent on the type of plotter which you have selected and also on the paper size so if you change the plotter the plotter margin will change accordingly currently a default paper size has been set so in order to check the paper size or the settings of plotter you can simply go to this floor plan right click and select page setup manager alternatively you can also go to this layout tab which will be active as long as you are in this layout view so whenever you switch to any of these layout views this layout tab will be active now from this layout tab simply click on this page setup and this page setup manager window will pop up here you will see all the details for example the plotter which is dwg to pdf so that's the virtual plotter which is selected and also we have the paper size which is 11 by 8.5 inches and landscape mode has been selected as you can see here so these are the settings which are currently applied to the layout you can absolutely change these settings and we'll learn about changing these settings in the upcoming videos for now i'll simply click on close now here we have a viewport with this rectangular boundary we'll learn about viewport also in a moment for now i'll simply select it and i'll erase it now we have a completely blank sheet of paper with the plotter margin and we are free to arrange our drawing on this paper in whatever way we want now there are many conventions of paper sizes the most popular one is the iso a series so you must be working with iso paper sizes like a0, A1, A2, A3, A4 and so on. So these are the popular type of paper sizes which are generally used in the drawing offices and there is a specific relation between these different kind of paper sizes. The biggest paper size in ISO A series is the A0 or the A0 and the area of that paper is 1 meter square. So the A0 paper size has an area of 1 meter square and also if you divide the length of that paper with its width the resulting value will be equal to root 2 or 1.414 now this specific relation between the length and width of paper size is maintained in all of the papers of a series so if you take any paper for example a1 and if you divide its length with its width the result will be root 2 if you take a2 paper and divide the length by width it will be root 2 and the same convention will follow for rest of the paper sizes also when you take the a naught paper and when you fold it from the center along the longer side that paper will become a1 similarly if you take a1 paper and fold it from the center line along the longer side then that will become a2 and similarly if you fold a2 from the longer side from the center it will become a3 then a4 and so on so that's a specific relationship which is maintained for the iso a series of paper there are also some other series of paper for example the nc series the b series iso b series and there are lots of other conventions and all of these paper sizes will be available with your plotter but most popularly iso a series is used and will use the same iso a series in our examples 
so that was an introduction to the paper space or the layout and different paper sizes in this video we'll learn about changing the settings of this current paper space or this layout and we'll modify lots of properties related to this paper space for example the plotter the paper sizes the scales and everything else so for changing those properties you can go to this layout tab and from here select this page setup alternatively you can also select the layout tab right click and select page setup manager so for now i'll select this page setup option now this will open this page setup manager from where you need to select the layout which you want to modify so i need this floor plan so i'll select it now click on modify and here we have it we have this page setup for lots of different properties related to the layout we'll start with the printer or plotter so right now this dwg to pdf dot pc3 plotter is selected but if you click on this drop down you will see lots of other plotters which are available so if you have any plotter installed it will be listed in this and for now i've selected this dwg to pdf but you can select this publish to web jpeg file or publish to web png file if you want output as images in jpeg or png format you can also select this xps compatible format and you can select other formats for example here we have some formats for pdf with different quality presets so you can select them as well for now i'll select this dwg to pdf now we have this properties button which is applicable for the plotter which you have selected so right now if you want to modify the properties of this plotter simply click on properties and it will be available for you to modify for now i'll simply click on cancel now we have these pdf options so when you click on pdf options these options will be visible but they will only be available for pdf plotters so right now we have selected this dwg to pdf if you select any other pdf compatible plotter for example this autocad pdf high quality it will still be available but if you select any other plotter for example if you select this hpe print that option will not be available so i'll select dwg to pdf and now i'll click on pdf options now from here you can control the vector quality right now it's set to 600 dpi or 600 dots per inch also the raster quality is set to 400 dpi or dots per inch now here we have this merge control which is set to override so this is the final output which you will get so if you have these colored line the overlapping line will take its color and that will proceed over the color of line which is underneath it you can change this setting by simply selecting line merge and you'll see the preview here so that will be the output available for this setting for now i'll select this lines overwrite now we have some options here for example the font handling option so here if you want to capture the fonts directly in the pdf you can keep this option checked but if you want to convert all the text into geometries you can keep this option checked for now i'll select this capture fonts used in the drawings now we have some options related to layer so if you want to include layer information keep this checked if you want to include hyperlink as well as bookmarks keep these options checked as well now once these settings are done click on ok and now we have this paper size option so from this menu you can select your paper size so right now we are using feet and inches or the imperial unit we generally use iso paper size so i'll select iso paper size here so i'll select iso a3 for this case so right now nca has been selected so i'll move up in this list and here you'll see these two different kind of iso paper sizes the first one is iso full bleed so here we have this iso full bleed a3 paper size or different paper sizes let's select this a3 full bleed and here in the preview you'll notice that we don't have have any kind of margin here so full bleed papers simply take up the complete space on your paper but if you select normal iso a3 paper for example here we have this normal iso a3 in the landscape view i'll select it you'll see this small margin also which is available with that so that's the paper size which will select iso a3 420 by 297 mm now we have the plot area option which is set to layout i'll not change it but you can change it to display or window 
we also have the plot offset which we are not going to change and here in the plot scale make sure that one is to one scale is selected so which is not set here in this case so i'll not change this scale i'll simply go to this mm and i'll change it to inches so as we are using inches as the standard unit for this drawing so i'll change it to inches and the scale has been set but if it is not set you can change it to one is to one from this drop down now we have here plot style tables and we'll learn about plot style table in the next module right now you can simply see all of these plot style tables which are available if you want drawing to be plotted as black and white drawing you can select this monochrome or you can select acad.stb if you want to retain the same colors you can also select none if you don't want any plot style tables so i'll simply select acad.stb that's the standard plot style and also we have the quality here which is normal you can change it to draft preview or high quality like presentation maximum or custom quality in which you can specify your own dpi value there is a limitation to this dpi value which is dependent on the type of plotter which you have selected so i'll simply select normal quality now if you want to plot object line widths keep this checked want to plot the transparency keep this one also checked now if you want to plot the plot styles so these are the plot styles so keep this also checked and generally the paper space is plotted first so if you want to override this setting and if you want to plot paper space in the end and if you want to plot model space in the beginning you can keep this unchecked also we have the last option which is hide paper space objects and this is applicable generally to the 3d drawings so in case of 3d drawings the hidden objects or the obscured objects will be hidden from the paper space also so now we have the orientation which is set to portrait or landscape you can select any of these i'll select landscape and now click on ok so you'll notice that this layout will respond in an appropriate way the layout simply changed also the plotter margin changed accordingly because new settings are now applicable and now if you look at this preview panel you'll see that we have new settings dwg to pdf plotter also we have the plot size which is 16.54 by 18.69 inches and that's its equivalent in the metric which we have already selected that's the paper size iso a3 now with these settings click on close and we have the paper size iso a3 here so that's the iso a3 paper with these plotter margins and we'll now start arranging our drawing on this layout In this video i will tell you about making and clipping viewports so right now we have this layout view in which we have already set the page we have already decided the plotter the size of paper and the plotter margins and other details now we'll add our viewports and to add the viewport i'll go to this layout tab now here in this layout tab we have this layout viewports option here now on this panel we have this rectangular so click on this and drop down and select this rectangular option now click at a starting point somewhere inside the plotter margins and click at the second point now as soon as you will do this you'll notice that all the components of the drawing area will be visible within these boundaries and this is the viewport so when you hover your cursor over this you'll see this viewport on the tooltip also when you click on the boundary you'll see these four grips at the end and using these grips you can modify the boundary of this viewport so you can now click on this grip you can move it and that will clip the area which is visible now currently this viewport is on the layout but it will behave as a model space object when you double click inside it so when i double click inside this viewport it will completely behave independent of the layout view as you can see when i'm panning my drawing here it's panning the complete drawing and it's not affecting anything which is outside now in order to get rid of this if you want to move out simply double click outside now we are outside the viewport now if you pan your drawing it will pan the complete drawing just like this now if you double click inside and if you zoom in and zoom out that will also affect only the viewport and if you double click outside and zoom in and zoom out it will affect the complete layout you can create as many viewports as you want so i'll click on this rectangular once again and i'll click another viewport here 
And here again, we have the complete drawing. So it's fitted completely within the viewport and you can edit it from its boundaries. Now, in this case, we are adding these viewports randomly, but you can also add some named or automatically created viewports. So I'll erase both of them. So I'll select them and I'll simply erase it. So erasing the viewport will not erase your model space object. So when you go to model space, you'll still have these drawings. So I'll go to floor plan and now here I will add some automatic viewports. So I'll go to layout and here we have this named option. So let's select this named and go to new viewports and select from any of these presets. So we have two vertical. Now in this case, two viewports will be added to horizontal three right left above below and all of these settings. So whatever you want, you can select from this list. So I'll select this viewport configuration. Click on OK. Now click at a starting point. So I'll click on this top left and I'll click on this bottom right. And all the viewports will be fitted within this area. Now, in this case, as I mentioned earlier, if you double click within any of these viewports, it will activate the model space and also all of these model space tools will be visible. Now, if you modify anything within this model space, then it will also be modified in the original model space and it will also modify all of these remaining drawings. So if you just try to add a circle, let's add it here. I'll add one circle here. You'll notice that the same circle will be added here as well as here. I'll click outside. So I'll double click here. Now I'll go to model view and we have the circle here also. So that is simply activating the model view and we can now remove it and that will be removed from all of these instances of layout and model space. Now in these cases, you can zoom in and zoom out this drawing and this may even happen accidentally. So what if you don't want to change the position of objects within a viewport? In that case, you can simply lock it. So right now I have set this object here and right now you can see that only east elevation is visible in this viewport. Now let's say that we want to lock it so that the changes don't affect anything within this viewport. So for that, I'll double click outside. Now I'll select the viewport boundaries and then I'll right click and select this display locked option and select yes. Now we have this viewport completely locked. So let's double click inside. We still have these model space objects, but when I zoom in and zoom out, it will zoom out or zoom in the complete layout, not the objects within the viewport. You can not only log and unlock this viewport from the right contextual menu, but you can do that from the layout tab also. So go to the layout tab. And now, as you know that this viewport is locked. So when I zoom in and zoom out, it is completely locked. So in order to unlock it, go to this layout viewports panel and select this unlock option. Now select the viewport, which you want to unlock. In this case, I want to select this one. So I'll select it and now press enter. Now it is unlocked. So now if you zoom in or zoom out, it will affect the complete drawing within this layout. So I'll double click outside and now we have this layout view deactivated. You can also clip viewports to show some of the selected regions. For example, here we have this viewport. Let's double click within this and I'll zoom into this area. Now let's say that we only want to show this main hall and we don't want all of these objects. For that, you can simply drag these boundaries. So I'll double click outside and I'll select the boundary or I'll just simply drag it like this. So you can do that or there is an alternate method also. So using that alternate method, you can simply create a new boundary and that will be shown instead of this viewport. So I'll double click outside and I'll select this clip option. Now select the viewport which you want to clip. In this case, I want to select this one. Now press enter. Now specify the starting point. So this will be the starting point somewhere over here. Now the second point, the third point, the fourth one. And in this case, if you want, you can select a little bit random shape also. So I'll simply click on this point and then on this point. Now this is the boundary which we want finally. So I'll press enter. And you'll notice that the boundaries will be clipped just like this and that viewport will be removed. So that's the main hall which we have in our view. You can not only make your viewports in rectangular shape, but you can also make them of very random shapes. So I'll remove all of these viewports for now. 
and now I'll go to this rectangular option once again and now I'll select this polygonal option. Now you can create a polygon so I'll start with this point then I'll click at this point then this point now I'll select arc because we can make an arc with this polygon option now I'll track this point I'll click here now I'll select line and I'll click at this point and press enter now we have a completely random shape of viewport as you can see here you can double click inside and that viewport will be active let's double click outside so you can not only make it with the polygon but you can also use objects so I'll go to home tab I'll select a circle let's say that we want a circular viewport I'll do that I'll make a circle let's get back to layout now select the drop down and select object now click on this circle and we have a new viewport a circular one so double click inside and we have it here just like this let's double click outside to deactivate it in all of these situations the objects within the viewport will always remain visible but you can hide them temporarily if you want for example if you don't want to show any of these objects within the circular viewport simply select the viewport boundary right click and select display viewport objects in this option select no and now all the objects within the viewport will be hidden even though the viewport is still there but nothing will be visible in order to make it visible again select it right click go to display viewport objects and select yes and the objects within the viewport are again visible so that was all about making our viewports and clipping them in this video we'll learn about one of the very important concepts of layout which is setting the scale and understanding the scales in viewport is quite important so here we have this a3 size layout and here we have this floor plan layout active also we have this layout 2 and layout 3 now in all of these layouts a3 paper size has been activated now i'll go to this floor plan layout and now go to this layout tab and i'll make a new viewport here so go to this layout viewports panel select the drop down select rectangular now click at this point and i'll drag it and i'll add it up to this point okay so here we have it now we don't know the scale of the objects here we don't know the size here so the first thing that I'll do is I'll simply double click inside and I'll zoom into this area and I'll try to fit it, this floor plan completely in our drawing okay now this one is fitted but still the exact scale of this drawing is not yet known now in this case when you activate any of these viewports right now you can see that this viewport is active as i can select these objects here and after activating the viewport when you go to this status bar you'll see this scale option now from here we can change the scale of this viewport so click on this option and you'll see this menu now here we have all of these scales available so right now you can just change it to any of these values so i'll select this one is to 30 and that's quite big so I'll change it once again I'll change it to 1 is to 50 and that looks just appropriate so I'll just pan this drawing a little bit and I'll ensure that the accidental zoom in on zoom out does not happen and now look at the scale on the status bar it's still 1 is to 50 that means we have the correct scale now double click outside and here we have it we have the exact scale set for this viewport so right now the size of this paper is obviously a3 size and the size of this object is 1 is to 50 so you can mention that scale directly on the title block here or you can you do that with these viewports which we'll do in a moment so we have the first viewport prepared now let's go to the second one here now here we have this viewport simply erase it now here we'll add more viewports so i'll start with the rectangular and I'll add the first viewport here let's make it of this size and here we will try to fit this front elevation so I'll fit this front elevation just like this so again we don't know the scale so I'll change it to some appropriate value so I'll go to this scale option and I'll change it to 1 is to 50 once again and that looks just appropriate so I'll keep it at that way now double click outside and let's create another viewport so I'll select this point and I'll click 
somewhere over here and make sure all of these viewports are within the plotter margin now i'll double click inside i'll zoom into this area the east elevation and i'll set its scale so i'll once again go to this option i'll change it to 1 is to 50 and this looks just right but we can still change its scale so here i'll click on this menu and here we have 1 is to 50 but we have limited number of options here for example we only have 1 is to 40 30 20 16 and 10 what if we want to add some other scale for example if you move up here we don't have 1 is to 60 so if you want to decrease the size we don't have 1 is to 60 or 1 is to 70 scale so those scales can be added directly for our new viewport so i'll click here and now i'll try to add a new scale so we just want to decrease its size and we want it to be of 1 is to 70 scale now for that i'll go to this model view and click on this scale here also we have the scale visible now select this custom option now here we have list of all the scales which are available simply select add and give it a name so i'll name it as 1 is to 70. now here we need one paper unit to be equal to 70 drawing unit so that's the unit which will set 1 is to 70 and then click on ok and ok now the scale has been added let's go to this layout 2 and once again double click inside this viewport go to this option and here we have 1 is to 70 the custom scale let's click on it and we have it now added and you'll see that the size of this object or this east elevation will decrease appropriately now i'll double click outside and here we have it now in this case if you want to adjust the scale or the viewport you can do that simply so i'll select the boundary and i'll adjust it just like this and i'll also move it somewhere over here now let's move to the third layout so i'll go to layout 3 and here we'll add a detailed view so i'll select the boundary of this layout erase it and once again i'll go to layout tab select the rectangular option and i'll create a new viewport here now in this case we want the kitchen in detail view so i'll double click inside i'll go to floor plan and here we have the kitchen so let's zoom into this area now we'll change it to appropriate scale right now we have a random scale so i'll go to this scale option and let's change it to 1 is to 10 well that's quite large i'll change it to something small which is 1 is to let's say 20 and that looks quite perfect so i'll just adjust it within this viewport here okay now this looks appropriate so now double click outside and we have this kitchen completely in our view so if you want to modify its boundaries even further you can do that for example i'll remove that text and i'll move it somewhere over here like this now we have prepared three different layouts along with the model view so we have the floor plan here we have the layout 2 which has the front elevation and east elevation so i'll rename it so i'll right click and select rename and i'll rename it as elevation now i'll go to layout 3 and i'll rename it as detail so we have all of these three layouts now we can add scales also with these viewports so right now we have the first viewport here which we have set and the scale for this viewport was 1 is to 50 so when you select the viewport boundary you'll see this scale here 1 is to 50 so if you want the same information to be presented here you can use fields for fields i'll go to insert tab so let's press escape go to insert tab and select field now we have this field window let's select objects from this drop down now from the field names select this object option now click on this select object box now click on the viewport boundary and all the properties which are related to the viewport will be listed in this property box now we need scale so i'll select this custom scale option and we have the formats so different formats are listed here you can select from any of these i'll select this format and the preview can be seen here quite clearly so we have one is to 50 scale now click on ok and add that value so right now you can see that the text is very small as it is taking the properties of its current text style so you can change it so i'll erase it and now i'll go to home tab I'll expand the annotation here we have the text let's click on this 
text style and here we have the text height so right now you can see that the standard text is active i'll change its value and i'll change it to 0.4 inches now click on apply click on close and we'll once again add the field here so once again go to insert go to field we have the same set of options already selected click on the box select the viewport custom scale the scale and ok now we have it of appropriate size here so you can change the size of your text and you can change its property and that will automatically be taken up by the field so we have here the scale similarly you can add this scale for other viewports so in this viewport also you can click on field click on object type select the viewport boundary custom scale and ok and here we have it the scale has been added here you can do the same for this and the remaining viewports so this was all about setting the scale of different objects in the viewports in this video i will tell you about managing layer visibility in viewports so we have made this drawing and we have added lots of different viewports in different layouts in the previous lesson we have also added this elevation layout in which we have these two different viewports in the first one we have the front elevation and here we have the east elevation now all of these drawings are currently assigned on different layers and the layer property will behave uniformly for all of these drawings as they are connected directly with the model space so if you go to model space and here if you change the layer assignment of any one of the object for example in this case we have the blocks let's go to the drop down and for this block layer i'll turn it off the visibility and all of the blocks in this floor plan the east elevation and the front elevation will be turned off so that will affect uniformly now i'll turn it on and i'll move back to the layout so here in the layout view we have some different settings also so using these settings we can change the properties of a specific viewports only to explain this i'll just move this layout over here and then i'll click on layer properties manager now this palette will pop up here we have the common properties of the layer and if you change any of these properties it will universally change the property of objects in all of these viewports but when you scroll this layer property manager a little bit over here you'll see some properties which are specific to the viewports right now you may not be able to see the name tag so right click on any one of them and select this maximize all columns so that will maximize it and now you'll be able to see the name of these columns so here we have this new vp freeze or new viewport freeze and here we have the viewport freeze so let's select this one and here you can simply see the block and its viewport freeze option so let's now freeze the visibility of this blocks layer so before that we need to activate the viewport so i'll double click on this viewport and this viewport is now active now click on this vp freeze and look at the blocks so we don't have the block here also the second block has been removed but we still have the block here although they are on the same layer so right now this change is affecting only this viewport so i'll double click outside and now i'll move to this text layer so in this case we have text in both of these viewports let's click on this one and now they are on both same layers so i'll turn off this so i'll freeze it and here the text has been hidden but in this case in this layout the text is still visible so in this way we can change the properties selectively for different viewports using these layer options you can not only change these options the freeze and thaw option but you can also change some other options which are related to the viewport for example i'll just scroll it a little bit towards right side and here we have the viewport line weight option here in this case let's say that we want to change the line weight of this viewport so i'll double click here and now here we have this zero layer i'll change its line weight and i'll assign a line weight of 0.5 mm click on ok double click outside now the line weight of objects in this viewport are changed so when you zoom into this you'll notice the difference in this case the line weight can be clearly seen and here we have the normal default line weight and the difference is quite visible now so i'll once again double click inside 
and I'll change the line weight to its default value and click on OK. Now double click outside. So now let's click on this close icon to close the layer properties manager. In most of the cases, this viewport boundary is a big distraction and we may not want this viewport boundary to be visible in many of the cases. So in order to hide these viewports, you can use a workaround. So you can create a new layer. So I'll go to layer properties manager. I'll click on this new layer and I'll give it a name. So I'll name it as VP, press enter. Now you can put these objects, the viewport boundaries on the VP layer. And now you can freeze this VP layer. So click on the drop down and freeze it. Now we don't have the viewport boundary. We still have the object. If you double click here, the viewport will be active. You can zoom in, zoom out, or you can do other modifications, but the viewport boundary is now invisible. So double click outside and we have only these clean drawings. So in this way, you can change the layer assignments selectively for different viewports in AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about adding title block to the AutoCAD drawings. So right now we have these drawings and the layouts without any title block or other information. And you can add your title block directly to the layouts by making them on these empty areas. So you can use this draw panel and modify panel to make new drawings here. You can add that using line polyline and different commands. But there is also a different way by which you can import the already made title block templates. So we have a title block on the desktop. I have it here. I have already made this title block and I'll use it in this video. So let's go back to the drawing and we'll insert that title block. So to insert the title block, I'll go to this insert tab and I'll click on this insert button and select more options. Now click on browse and locate the title block. So we have it here on the desktop. Now click on open with the default settings. I'll click on OK. And here we have it. The title block is now added. So carefully place it within these plotter margins. And here we have it right now. This title block has been made specifically for a three paper size. And that's why it's fitting completely within these boundaries. But in order to have title blocks for different paper sizes, you need to make them or you can also scale any one title block for different paper sizes. Now, in this case, this is a block and in order to use it properly, you need to explode it. So I'll select it and then I'll type X and press enter. So that will explode it. And now we can modify different parts of the title block or we can add more information. Similarly, if you go to the elevation here also, if you want to add it, now you can simply go to this insert and select the title block from this list. Here we have it because we have already added it once. Select it, specify the base point, which is somewhere over here. And we have the title block and all the other information within this drawing. AutoCAD also has some ready-made title blocks for you and these are available with the drawing templates. So if you want to use those templates with title block, simply go to this plus icon right beside the layout tabs, then right click and select this from template. Now this will open this template window and here you can select the template which has title block. For example, here we have the Imperial Architectural template on which we have the title block. Also, we have the manufacturing template, the metric architectural and metric manufacturing template. So I'll select this imperial architectural template, click on OK. And we have this new D size layout added here. So in this case, obviously, the plot size is different, the paper size is different. And the viewport is here, we have this object here in order to see this clearly, you need to first unlock it. So I'll just select this, then I'll right click, I'll go to display logged and I'll select no. Now double click inside. And here we have it. Now we can move it here in this drawing area, double click outside. And we have it just like simple drawing. And we also have this title block. Here also you can select it and explode it once. And now you can modify different fields of this title block, but you need to change the paper size because in this case, we don't know the paper size of this title block and it will be set according to the template. So for now, I'll simply erase this D size layout. 
So this was all about inserting our own title block and other information in AutoCAD drawings. So now we have made all the final settings in our drawing. We have arranged the different views and layouts and we've also prepared the model space. Now it's the time to get final output. So we can get final output directly as a paper or we can also plot our drawings in PDF format or we can also plot it in XPS, JPEG, PNG or other formats. Now here we'll start plotting our drawing from the model space. So right now we have this drawing here in model space and in order to plot it, you can simply use the command shortcut control P. So when you press control P, it will open this plot window. Now there are also alternate methods of accessing this and you can do that by clicking on this plot icon on the quick access toolbar. Alternatively, you can also go to this application button, select the print option and then plot. So these are different options that you can use to plot your drawings. But before plotting these drawings, we'll create a page setup and we'll use that page setup for plotting. So to create the page setup, go to this output tab and click on page setup manager. Now here we have this model space. So obviously we don't want this one. We want to create our own page setup. For that, I'll click on new and I'll give it a name. So let's name it as our setup and let's click on OK. So here we have this our setup page setup. Now we have the first setting which is printer or plotter. So right now none is selected. So you can select any of these printers. So you need to select a printer here in order to get the plot in your desired output. For example, if you want your drawing in PDF format, you can select this Microsoft print to PDF or DWG to PDF or there are some other plotters like these four plotters which have some quality preset already defined so you can select them also but for this case i select this dwg to pdf now we have the properties options for this plotter so you can change the properties related to the selected plotter from this properties window and i'm not going to change anything as of now so i'll simply close it and here we have these pdf options so when you click on this pdf options the pdf options for the selected plotter will be available and this will only appear as long as you have selected a pdf compatible plotter so in this case we can set the vector quality or the raster image quality the lines override type and the font handling capabilities either you want to capture it or you want to convert it into text so you can select from any of these options so i'll select the fonts in the pdf file so that's quite helpful if you are using some custom fonts and you want to include them directly in the pdf file also you can include the layer information by checking this checkbox and you can include hyperlinks as well as bookmarks now click on ok and the next setting is paper size so here let's select iso a3 and now we have an important setting here which is the plot area so in this case display is selected and right now whatever is displayed in the drawing area will be plotted now in order to see the final output simply click on preview button and you'll see the final output here so this is the output which we'll get and right now the drawing is not quite centered it's somewhere in the downward side of this paper so we'll make it centered so i'll close it and now to make it centered i'll click on this checkbox so that will center our drawing. Now click on preview and we have it now centered on the paper. Now let's close it. We also have some other options here. For example, from this drop down, we can select extends. So that will fit our drawing in the display area and then that will plot it. So once I've selected extends, I'll click on preview again. And there we have it. The drawing is fitted completely up to the margins and it is now plotted. Let's close it and now let's look at this window option. So when you select this window option, you'll be provided with an option to select a window and all the drawing components which are within that window will be plotted. So I'll make this window and we have the drawing here in the printable area. Now when you look at the preview, you'll see that the drawing is completely fitting within the paper as indicated by these hatch marks. So that's an indicator that your drawing is fitted properly. But in order to fit it properly, certain scale of the drawing has been applied automatically. So when you go to this plot scale, you'll see that a scale of one by 1.6 has been applied automatically. That's because we have selected this fit to paper option. So let's uncheck it. 
now when you uncheck it you will be able to use this drop down so using this drop down you can change the scale so right now we have one by 1.6 unit as the scale so i'll simply change it to one is to two and here's the final output so that's what we are going to get now let's try and change it to one is to one and that's simply indicating that it will overflow the paper and lots of the parts of this drawing will be clipped so that's not the correct scale i'll simply change it to one is to two you can even try some smaller values for example one is to four and that looks quite small so i'll keep it at one is to two okay so that's the final scale and this scale can be indicated in the title block also now we have the plot style tables so you can use these colored plot style table any of them whichever you want and we'll learn about plot style table in a moment for now i'll keep it at none and here we have the quality preset i'll keep it at normal we want to plot object line weight we want to plot transparency also we want it in landscape view now click on ok so here we have this our setup which is now completely configured so currently you can see that this our setup is not set as the current layout so in order to make it your current setup you can simply double click on this and now our setup has been set as the current page setup you can also do that by selecting this set current option now let's close it and now let's go and plot the drawing so i'll go to this plot option and here you'll see this our setup now we don't need to make any of these settings we have already done that now you can simply click on preview and this will show this warning message that's because the annotation scale or the scales of annotative objects like text hatches dimensions are different so in this case you can see here that the annotative scale is set to one is to one but the actual drawing scale is set to one is to two so these two values are different that's why we are seeing this message but we have not applied any annotative object in this case so you can simply click on continue and here we have the final output so now our drawing is ready to plot so i'll close it and i'll click on ok now once again click on continue specify the location so i'll save it as drawing one click on save and here we have it the drawing has been plotted from the model view we have the layer assignment here all the layers are available you can check their visibility by turning them on or off and we are good to go so let's close it so in this way we can plot our drawings from model view So now we have already seen how to plot our drawings from model space. In this video, we'll learn to plot it from the layout view or the paper space. So I'll move to this flow plan. And in this layout, we have all the objects arranged properly. Now, in order to plot only this layout, simply go to the layout tab, right click and select plot. Alternatively, you can also use the keyboard equivalent control P, or you can also select this plot icon. Now here also we have all the properties set for this layout which we have already assigned while making this layout and in order to plot it simply you can click on OK. So before plotting I'll click on preview to see a preview of this and that's the preview here. So let's close it. Now click on OK and go to desktop and let's give it a name. So let's name it as layout 2 and I'll click on save. So here we have it, the layout has been plotted. Now in a similar way, you can plot other layouts from this drawing. But in that case, you need to plot all of these layouts one by one. And that may be a very time consuming task if you have lots of different layouts here. So AutoCAD has a direct method of plotting multiple layouts directly using the publish option. So if you want to plot multiple sheets, you can use the publish tool. So in order to access the publish tool, go to this application button. Now select this print option and select this batch plot. Now we have this publish window here. Now we can make settings. The first setting is sheet list, which we don't have any. So I'll just keep it at none. Here we have the publish tool, which I'll select as PDF. We want output as PDF file. Also, we have the quality preset, which we can change from here. So if you want high quality print, you can select here. 
you can also select the publish option so i'll click on this publish options and here you can specify the location where you want to save your drawing so i'll keep it at desktop and i'll not change any of these settings because we also want the fonts to be captured we want the layer information on all these settings now click on ok and here we have the drawings which will be plotted so we have the model space which will be plotted and also these three layouts also they will be plotted with their default page setup now in case you want to change page setup for any of them you can simply click on this drop down and change their page setup for example here in this case we have this our setup which we have created in the previous video you can change it to that or you can keep its own page setup for now i'll select this our setup only for model space for rest of the options i'll keep it at the default value now simply click on publish option specify the location give it a name so i'll name it as publish and click on select and we don't want to save this list so i'll click on no so now autocad will do this job in the background and as long as this drawing is being published you'll see this small animated icon here on the bottom of this status bar so as long as the publishing job is happening it will be visible like this okay and here we have the bubble so now the publishing job is complete so i'll go to desktop and here we have the publish file so let's double click on it and here we have it so we have the model space as per our plot style which we have set and also we have the floor plan one the elevation and the detail according to our page setup so in this way you can plot multiple sheets along with the model space directly using the publish option of AutoCAD. In this video, I will tell you about plotting your drawings with different colored plot style tables. So the plot style tables or the pen assignments are the different settings for your plotter. And using these assignments, you can tell plotter to plot your drawing in a very specific way for example here we have this drawing with lots of different colors and line weight line types and other settings now let's say that we want to plot this drawing in monochrome you can use a different plot style monochrome plot style to be exact to plot this drawing so although the drawing will be completely colored but when you'll send it to a plotter it will be printed as a black and white or a monochrome drawing in a similar way, you can add different plot style table. For example, all the text in this drawing is currently red. If you want to change it, if you want to change the color of this text in the plot assignment or in the plot style, you can assign it as green and all the text in this drawing will be plotted as green, even though it will remain red in this drawing. So we'll learn to make our own colored plot style table but before that we'll check the current plot table assignment of this drawing so you can check the plot style which is assigned to this drawing by going to the options window so right click anywhere in the drawing area and select this options now here go to this plot and publish tab and click on plot style table settings now we have this plot style table settings and here you'll see these two radio buttons. The first one is use color dependent plot style. Second one is use name plot style. So here in this case, color dependent has been selected. So that's the plot style which we have. Now let's click on OK and OK again. Now I'll go to the plot option. And here we have all the settings already configured for us. So we don't need to change any of these settings. Now let's say that we want to first preview the drawing in this current situation. So for that, I'll click on preview and that's the final output which we'll get. Now let's close it and now let's change the first plot style. So here we have this plot style table menu. Now click on this menu and select a different plot style. So in this case, I'll select this grayscale dot CTB. So CTB is the extension for colored plot style table. So I'll select it now i'll click on preview and here we have it now although the drawing is still colored still we have this black and white preview in which the transparency or the screening effect has already been applied depending upon the intensity of color now let's close it and now let's say that we don't want the intensity of color to change we want them to remain uniform while plotting a black and white drawing for that we can select monochrome so let's select monochrome click on preview 
and here we have it the intensity of color remain uniform in all of these different parts of the drawing and still we have this black and white drawing now let's close it and now let's look at other options here so we have the screening option so you can screen it by 75% by selecting this 25% screening so in that case if you select 25% screening the drawing will dim by 75% here the 50% dimming here the 25% dimming so I'll select this screening 75 click on preview and there we have it so now the drawing has been dimmed to 25% if you change it to let's say 25 it will be dimmed even further and here we have it a completely dimmed drawing so in this way you can change lots of different settings so these are some of the predefined colored plot style table now if you want to create your own plot style table simply click on the menu and select this new option now you will see this wizard from here you need to select the appropriate options so i'll start with this option start from scratch now click on next and we'll give it a name so let's name it as test and click on next now we have this plot style table editor click on this button and here we have this general tab in which all the information related to this is listed you can add a description if you want here we have the table view of the settings and the form view so these two have same information but in different view so i'll select this form view now here we can select the color and assign their properties here so i'll start with the cyan so here we have the cyan color as color 4 and we want this cyan color to be plotted as something else so i'll go to color and i'll select this select color option and let's select this orange type of color a saffron type click on ok so that's quite recognizable now if you want you can also assign some line weight to this so i'll go to use object line weight and i'll change it to 0.5 Okay, so these are the two settings which we have changed, but obviously you can change lots of different settings here. Now I'll click on save and close and I'll click on finish. So now we have created our own test.ctb plot style. Now let's see how our plot will look with this plot style table. So I'll click on preview and here we have it. All the blocks which were cyan in color are now changed and also their line weights are changed appropriately. Now let's click on close and let's click on ok to plot this drawing with these settings so i'll select 2 as the name and i'll click on save and here we have it the final output as per the settings which we have applied here so as you can see here clearly that we have applied a different line weight for this drawing so the line weight has been retained if you compare it with the line weight of this block you can clearly see the difference so let's now close it and let's click on close here on this bubble as well so that was all about creating the colored plot style table in AutoCAD in the previous lesson I told you about creating the colored plot style table and using that color plot style table we have changed different properties of this plot now we have the same drawing but in this case instead of using a colored plot style table I'll use a named plot style table and using a named plot style table you can assign the properties and directly to the objects or to the layers so right now I'll once again check the color assignment of this drawing so I'll right click anywhere click on options and here click on plot style table settings from plot and publish tab and here you can see that we have this color dependent plot style selected so obviously the drawing will be either a color dependent plot style table or a named plot style so you can only keep one of these settings active at a time so I'll select this use named plot style and now click on OK so we are essentially converting this drawing containing a colored plot style table into a named plot style table drawing i'll click on ok now we'll use the command convert ctb to convert the already created file which was test ctb to a named plot style so i'll type convert ctb and press enter now select the colored plot style 
which we have created in the previous lesson. So in the previous lesson, we have selected this test. So that's the plot style, the colored plot style or the CTB plot style, which we need. Now click on open. And now it will ask you to specify the name of new named plot style. In this case, you can see the extension has changed to STB. So we'll keep the same name and now click on save. And it will show you this message that it is successfully created. Now click on OK. And we have converted our colored plot style table to a named plot style table, but we still have one more step. The drawing is not yet properly converted. So in order to convert this drawing also, you need to use the command convert P styles. So type the command, press enter, and now it will again warn you that you should convert your CTB file into a STB before using this command. So we have already done that. Now click on OK. And it will prompt you to select the named plot style which you want to apply. So we want this test plot style and now click on open. So there we have it. Now the drawing is fully converted to a named plot style table and it's using a test.stb named plot style. Now I'll go to this plot and here you'll notice that instead of CTB plot styles, we have these STB. So now you can use these plot style tables in your drawing. So we have this test.stb. Let's now select it and let's see the preview. So I'll click on preview and there we have it. So this is the preview which we will get using this plot style. But if you want to modify the properties of this plot style, you can do that. So I'll simply click on close. Now I'll select the test.stb and I'll click on this box right beside that and it will open the editor of this STB file. Now we have the normal style, the style 1 and the style 2. So in the style 2, we have assigned this color. So let's change this color and I'll change it to magenta. Now I'll keep rest of these settings as they were. I'll not change it and I'll simply click on save and close. Now let's click on preview and there we have it. The color is now changed. So let's now click on close. And let's click on OK and plot the third drawing. So here we have it. Click on save. And it is plotted in the PDF output. So up to this point, you might have found that CTB and STB are quite similar and almost there is no difference. But now here comes the difference. In case of colored plot style table, you were restricted to use them from the plot window. You are not allowed to change the properties selectively, but in this case, you can change the properties selectively. For example, here we have the viewport. Let's select it. And now I'll change the properties of this viewport. So right click, go to properties. And here on this properties, you'll see this plot style. Let's click on this and change it to style two. Now click on close and press escape. Now I'll go to plot and let's click on preview. And there we have it. So if you look at the boundary, you'll notice that it will now take the plot style which we have assigned. Similarly, when you go inside this drawing, you'll notice that this carpet boundary is now currently set as its default. We'll change it also. So let's cancel it. Let's double click inside, click on the carpet boundary, right click, go to properties, once again, I'll go to plot style and I'll change it to style two. Now close it, press escape, double click outside, go to plot and the preview. And there we have it. The property is now changed for that carpet. So in this way, you can selectively apply it on different objects. So that's the basic difference between a colored and named plot style table. So with these settings, let's click on OK and let's plot the final PDF drawing. So I'll select the name as 04, click on save. There we have it, the final drawing here as a PDF output. So let's close it. And this was all about creating a named plot style table and assigning it to different objects in AutoCAD. Okay, so here we have our question related to this module. Here you need to open 17.1 sample drawing, which is available with the lesson file downloads. And you need to publish this drawing or batch plot this drawing and all of its layouts in a single PDF file. 
and you need to ensure that layouts use default page setup and the model space uses our setup page setup. 